Hey, what's going on, guys? So the other day I put out a tweet asking for some suggestions for basically videos that were non-tutorial type videos. And I got a lot of great responses. Thank you for you guys that uh, that responded and gave me some ideas and I'll be using them in the future. But there were a lot of um, there were a lot of uh, responses that had to do with making money, how to make money with web development, with software development. And I initially I was going to make a video like, you know, the five five ways to make money as a web developer or something like that. But there's a lot of videos, a lot of articles like that. So I figured that I'd, I'd personalize it and give you my story about how I've how I've made a living with web development because I've done a, a couple things. You know, I've done the job thing, freelance side projects, content creation. So I want to just go over kind of the timeline and um, and what I've done. And, and, and the goal of this video isn't to just talk about myself it's to give you an idea of of at least one person's experience with all this all right so uh let's see i started learning web development in like 2006 uh 2007 maybe and i i learned just like everyone else html um, css javascript i learned php i learned wordpress joomla which is another content management system that's pretty much dead now and uh, code igniter which was my first framework it's php framework so i learned those those technologies and uh, i knew that i wanted to work in web development at the time i was doing computer repair on the side which wasn't doing very well uh, that was you know it's a dying industry but um I wanted to get a job in web development, but I knew that no one would hire me because I had no experience, I had no degree, I had no portfolio, I had nothing. And I had a pretty harsh past as far as, you know, issues with addiction and, and I'm not, stuff I'm not going to go into in this video. But um, so I decided to, to start freelancing. And like most freelancers or many freelancers, I signed up for Upwork.com, which was then Odesk.com and created a profile and signed up or uh, you know applied for a bunch of gigs or positions and i ended up getting a few and they were very very low paying uh because i had no feedback i had no reviews i had no profile no proof that i even know, knew what the hell i was doing so i had to work for peanuts basically and i'm sure that a lot of you guys that are just starting out are going through this now and, and try not to get discouraged because it will get better um, and what I did is I, pu I still put all my effort into it. I looked at it as kind of like an internship, right? So I would put all my effort into it, try to make my clients happy, give them, you know, what, do what I'm supposed to do. And I ended up building a pretty nice portfolio, pretty nice, uh, profile on Odesk, uh, which is now Upwork and getting some good reviews. So then I could raise my rates. I raised my hourly rates. Uh, I raised my fixed price projects and um, started to get better work. Now, at the same time, I was also doing projects for local businesses. I was passing out business cards to, to you know, restaurants and um, flower shops. I did a site for a, a horse farm that's in the next town over. So that was actually where I made the majority of the, my money that year freelancing was local businesses. So definitely do that. Don't just stick to Upwork or freelancing websites because, you know, you won't make that much. Um, until you really get established. So I did that for about a year and probably made maybe, I don't know, 35K or something like that, which, you know, isn't that much compared to the industry standards. But for someone that just basically learned this stuff, you know, six months ago, I think that that was a pretty good year, pretty, you know, uh, and prior to that, I had, I had, didn't make a lot of money at all. I had very crappy jobs. But, um, you know, after a year or so, after I, I had a pretty nice portfolio of real projects, real businesses, real URLs that I could point to, uh, I started applying for a dev job because I wanted to work in the industry. I knew ultimately I wanted to do my own business, but I wanted that experience. So I ended up landing a pretty decent role, um, and it was doing a lot of the stuff that I already knew, a lot of PHP, um, we ended up using uh, a lot of jQuery. Angular JS had just come out then, uh, and we started using that. That was my first experience with a front end framework. But uh, I did that for a while, and then 
I, I pretty much plateaued. I knew that I wasn't going to go much further in terms of salary and, you know, job title and so on. So I decided to leave that job on good terms and go back to my own business. And this time I was taking it more seriously. It wasn't, I wasn't just a freelancer. I was, run, I was now going to run a business. So I created Tech Guy Web Solutions and uh, registered it as an LLC. Before that, when I was freelancing, uh, it was just a DBA from the city hall. But now it was actually a registered business and got an accountant and got, you know, really serious about it. Um, so I offered a bunch of services. So, so obviously web development, but I also partnered with a digital marketing agency that would allow me to basically upsell SEO services, uh, digital marketing and stuff like that so that I could offer that to my clients. And at the same time, I was reselling hosting. I bought a, or I rented a couple dedicated servers so that I could offer shared hosting accounts with web development services. So I was able to give my clients just everything, just an all-in-one solution rather than them having to go find SEO, find hosting. I took care of everything and, uh, you know, did pretty well. So... I did that for about, I don't know, two, a little over two years or so, and I was making over 200 k per year. Uh, I was getting a lot of clients online and locally, word of mouth, stuff like that. Um, but after, after a couple years, and I was ranking really well on Google, but after a couple years, my site just kind of fell off of Google. I was ranking really well for some, some key terms, and one day I woke up, and, and I always had contact submissions when I woke up from people looking for work, looking for, you know, uh, projects. And one day I didn't have any and I went to Google and my site was just vanished. Uh, it was that big algorithm update. I know they've done a few, but there was a really big one back then. And it, it screwed over a lot of people. And I didn't have I didn't do any black hat SEO or anything. So I'm not sure why, but it was just gone. And it, it literally cut my business in half, uh, maybe even more than that because all my online clients stopped. It was now just local and, and uh, existing clients and stuff like that. So I needed to do something else to make up for that. So I ended up getting into side projects and uh, I, I've done quite a bit of side projects. A lot failed a lot and some didn't. Uh, I did a lot of content websites. So to give you some examples, I had a, a site called reliablehosts.com which was a web hosting review site. Um, I did a, uh, a DJ social network. I created a, a tech blog that was pretty popular, made a lot of uh, revenue through AdSense. I, did, I even did a, a methadone clinic directory because I have you know, substance abuse in my past and with my family and friends and stuff. So I wanted to do something in recovery and addiction. So I created a, a methadone clinic directory with the map and all the points in New England and stuff like that. So just, just directory-based sites, blogs, uh, just content websites. So all of them put together, I was making maybe 10 grand a month, and I paid out maybe two grand, 2,500 a month for content writing because I didn't have time to create the content. So I would have other people do that for me. And it was pretty much passive income. You know, after, after the initial creating the site or creating the app, I, it was just passive income. Um, I did have to maintain it, but it wasn't anything that complicated. Um, so it wasn't a big deal. But um, yeah, so content websites with AdSense, with affiliate links, that's another idea, you know, something that you guys can do um, even just as a, a side project if you're working for a company. So I ended up selling those assets after a while uh, for a pretty, pretty good chunk of change and just kind of moved on, uh, started getting more clients for my company. I also started a, a little company called joomdigi.com that sold Joomla extensions. Uh, Joomla is, is, like I said, it's, an, it's a content management system. It's not really popular anymore, but it was pretty popular back then. And I had a suite of, of extensions, or, or they were called components. So, for instance, I had a, a classifieds one called JD Classifieds. I had a knowledge base, JD Knowledge Base. What else? I had a subscription one. So, basically, developers could purchase these from me and use them in, in their Joomla sites. Uh, 
and I sold each one for like nineteen ninety nine, and or a package of all of them, which was like seven or eight of them, for I think a hundred bucks. Um, I think I, I can't really remember, but uh, you know I made maybe three or four grand a month through that without promotion or anything. And all I had to do really after creating the website and creating the components was answer some support tickets, maybe an hour per week. The, the software was pretty simple or the components were pretty simple. Basically, I created the classifieds one and then just based all of the other ones off that. So it was kind of like just a crud component. And then I just rebranded it for each extension. And that's something that I would suggest doing, not Joomla components in 2019, but building something, some kind of plugin, even WordPress plugins or themes, something like that, that you can just create and you can just sell and just create that passive income flow. You know, so I did that for a while. Unfortunately, it just kind of fell by the wayside. Joomla updated and uh, the components kind of went out of date. And it that was one of my mistakes as I just let it go. I should have just, even though I didn't have the time, I should have just hired somebody to maintain um, the components for me instead of just, I just let it go. I didn't sell the company or anything, uh, which I regret. So, I mean, I've made, you know, stupid mistakes like that. We all do. And I've also created a bunch of projects that went nowhere that made no money that, you know, got no visitors. So don't get, don't get discouraged if you build something and it doesn't work out. I mean, success is, is basically just a bunch of failures, you know, and, and it's up to you on what you do with that failure. Do you let it consume you and define you and and uh, just stop, or do you keep going and, and figure something else out? So, anyway, uh, you know, I was work still doing the company thing, and I decided to start a YouTube channel to promote my business, try to get some more clients. Also, I wanted to do tutorials because I was inspired by by uh, channels like the New Boston, and I wanted to help people out and and I. It was just fun to me to create tutorials. So I started doing that while I was working, while I was, you know, running my business. And after a while, I, I started, it started to pick up. I got maybe 20,000 subscribers or so. And then I was contacted by a company called Eduonix, which was a, a brand new startup. And they were looking for instructors for courses. And they asked me to do an HTML5 course. And they paid me a fixed price for that. And I did it, and uh, they liked it. The students liked it, and they asked me to do another one, which was, I think it was CSS. And then I did JavaScript, and then I did a whole bunch of JavaScript frameworks. Uh, if you guys remember back then, there was Backbone, there was Ember, uh, Knockout JS. I did small courses on all of those. So I was doing a course like every month, um, smaller ones than I do now. But I, I at that time, I realized that that's what I really loved doing more so than doing client work or anything like that. I loved being able to create my own courses, create my own projects and teach people and help people out. So I'll, ultimately, I decided to just go full education. So I, I basically stopped my business. Um, you know, I had to let the, the two people go that I hired. And any existing clients that I had, I just communicated with personally and said, you know, I'm not doing this anymore. And I helped them basically move to other hosting and all that stuff. Um, and then I just went full education. I, I had my YouTube channel was Brad Traversy. I changed it to Traversy Media, changed my company name. I incorporated it. So it's now an S Corp. Um, you know, so I, it's a full fledged business now. And I uh, started making my own Udemy courses instead of making courses for someone else. And uh, I had a big enough YouTube following where I could promote my courses. I think Angular was my first one. And it, it just went from there. And, and it's been very, very successful. Um, and I, I make more doing content creation than I did freelancing, than I did having my own business or working for a company. And it's, it wasn't planned that way, you know. And you wouldn't think... Out of all the things I just told you, you'd probably think working for a company would make me the most money, but it, it didn't. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can do. Content creation is just what worked out for me. Um, you know, and there's a lot of other things that you can do. One thing that I would like to get into in the future is creating software and licensing it out. So an example, and, and this is just a quick example I came up with this morning. So let's say we have a comic book shop and maybe maybe they want... 
uh, an application that will allow them to notify their buyers when a certain comic book comes out, when a certain, or when a, they get a certain comic book in, and then it can notify the buyer. Maybe they can bid on it or something like that. Um, I think that if you built something like that and you pitched it to comic book shops, you could license it out to them. And of course you could, you know, license it to many comic book shops and then maybe even take the, the base software and rebrand it to coin collectors or antiques and then go to coin shops and antique shops and pitch it to them. And then you'll, you'll be licensing this software out to all these different uh, businesses or all these different shops. And I think you can make a fortune with that, you know, and, and that, that's just an example. If you think about it, every, every niche, every category needs software development, right? Everyone uses software and there's a lot of things you can build that, will be worth it to uh, a business to license it out from you. And if you don't want to do licensing and provide support, you could just build something and sell it outright, you know, sell it to another developer or something. So there's a lot of stuff like that you can do. And, and I know it's, it's hard and you're going to have failures, but you, there, you can find a lot of success. And I'm not shitting on, um, you know, a nine to five job. That's, that's fine. A lot of people want that job security where they get that salary, they get that paycheck every week, and it's, it's, it's secure. You know, when you freelance or you do other stuff, it's risky because you might not make anything, you might fail, but you also might get a lot more success, right? If you work a dev job, you're not going to make more than, I don't know, 150, 200K per year, which, which is a lot of money, but it's possible to make more, you know, you can, if you want to make three, four, 500K per year, maybe even more, um, you have to do something on your own, really. But, uh, and, and again, I'm not, I'm not discouraging people from getting a regular job at a company. That's, that's a fine goal. It's just not for me. Uh, you know, but, and, and I would suggest doing it at some point, even if you plan on doing your own thing, just so you get that experience. But uh, that's it, guys. I just wanted to kind of share my story and maybe you can take something from it. Uh, maybe, you know, you can, maybe it'll kind of, steer you in a, a specific direction on what you want to do because I know a lot of you guys are kind of new to this and you're trying to find your way so that's it thanks for watching and I'll see you next time